But this was very interesting for a number of reasons. This is Sky, which is the first people to announce that they're having an all 3D channel. And then DirecTV has come out also with an announcement about it. And I showed up here, this was Saturday morning, I just got off the flight. I got these glasses the day before, and big change in my prescription, and I was feeling very uncomfortable, uh, kind of queasy. And I get up here, and she's telling her, yeah, you know, I tried the glasses, I really don't like it because I get very uncomfortable, I get queasy after a while. I put on the glasses, all of a sudden I feel great. <laughs> and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, they did have some very good programming that they were showing. So here's 3D TV through the ages. Some of you have seen this before. Uh, first 3D TV, 1928. There's a little stereoscope there. That's actually a, a terrific way of doing 3D TV. Uh, here's a 1930 textbook about TV. There are, of course, several methods of accomplishing stereoscopic television. These are glasses that were sold in 1953, which is when Business Week ran the headline, 3D Invades TV. There's an Ikigami 3D camera came out in 1991. There's a Canon one starting in 2001. And then this year at NAB at the Digital Cinema Summit, Dr. Martin Banks of the University of California, Berkeley says, aha, we have come up with the first evidence that a virgin's accommodation conflict can cause fatigue and discomfort. To which I say, first evidence? Studies made by Hartridge, Kletsky, and others indicate that one of the most common causes of eye strain consists in an unconscious attempt on the part of the observer to modify the normal coordination of the ocular reflexes of accommodation and convergence, published in 1926. Okay, well, what does this mean for real? Well, here's a lens, and I've blown up the focus ring over here. So this is accommodation. Accommodation is the focusing of the eye's lens. Um, and when the eye's lens focuses on something, not only does it make it clearer in your eye, but it sends feedback to the brain saying, I have just focused at this distance, so make the eyes converge on that same point. Well, here's the focus ring. The top is feet, the bottom is meters. So there's half a meter, one and a half feet. There's three feet, there's one meter. And then, whoops, right after one meter, we have infinity. Um, because we don't focus very well at things that are far away. Well, in a cinema, you're sitting 30 to 120 feet away from the screen. So, focus is not happening. You're essentially focused at infinity. But when you're watching TV, you're sitting anywhere from a foot to 10 feet away from the screen. Uh, focus is an issue when you're watching home TV. Same thing with convergence or convergence, basically the same thing. This is based on a 2.6 inch interpupillary distance, which is common for adults. If you look at something half a foot away, each eye is towing in by 12.2 degrees, very substantial. Look at something even eight feet away, a typical TV viewing distance, and you're towing in almost a degree, enough to be relatively significant. But now in that movie theater, by the time you're 30 feet away from the screen, you're towing in two tenths of a degree. Um, that's essentially looking straight ahead. So there is no virgin issue in a movie theater. There is no accommodation issue in a movie theater. But at home, there can be. So this is a slide from a paper that was given at IBC called The Truth About Stereoscopic Television. This shows when things are at infinity, the eyes are looking straight ahead. They're separated by the interpupillary distance. You can have objects behind the screen. You can have objects in front of the screen or objects on the screen. Notice there are no numbers any place on here. So we're not saying how big this screen is, how far the observer is from the screen, anything like that. So here is the guy who gave the paper, David Wood, of the European Broadcasting Union. And this is from the IBC Daily News headline, Conference Today, Wood Calls for Health Warning on 3D Television. Actually, that wasn't in his paper at all, but it was in the interview that he gave to the reporter. And he says, I plan to concentrate on getting broadcasters to take the issues around eye fatigue seriously and shows should at the very least carry a caution that viewers should not watch 3D for long periods. Well, is he just making stuff up or is there a serious issue here? Um, this isn't the year of 3D TV. We have this infinite distance parallel interpupillary problem. So on the orange lines here, I'm showing the eyes looking straight ahead at something that's infinity. Well, if you set that for a 30-foot screen, they'll be roughly two and a half inches apart, that's fine. 
But if you then show that on a 60-foot screen, the eyes have to diverge in order to fuse. That's not something that we do. If you show it on a 15-foot screen, then the eyes are converging, and they're sending feedback to the brain saying this thing is not at infinity. And if you show it on a TV screen, then it's something really close. And then a combination, again, with the exception of holographic or moving mirror displays, convergence does not match accommodation. So here is a paper that uh, in 3 which is a U.S. company that does uh, 3D synthesis, uh, the sort of people who invented 3D synthesis came out with it about the same time as IBC. It's available on their website. It's free. Uh, here's a movie theater, and they're saying the farthest comfortable position for something in the movie theater is out at infinity, and the nearest comfortable position is eight feet back from the screen. This is assuming that you were about 40 feet from the screen. Well, that's a pretty good range of stuff. No big deal there. But then they say, and this is a company that's in the 3D business. They want you to use them to turn stuff into 3D. In a home theater, the comfortable viewing range, well, the farthest comfortable thing is only four feet behind the screen. That's a lot closer than infinity. And the nearest comfortable thing is only 1.8 feet from the screen. That's still like four feet plus from the viewer. So we don't have anywhere near the same kind of range in the home that we have in, this, in the theater. If you try to uh, simply repurpose stuff from the cinema for the home, it's not going to work. So TV innovation, there's always been a money and training issue. You know, sound was hard, color, stereo sound, widescreen, HDTV, digital. It's pain, but we eventually get it to go. But 3D adds another thing, which is possible nausea. And so last year's IBC, Jeff Katzenberg said, the last thing you want to do is make your audience furl. <laughs> Probably good. Which is why in 1940, when the NTSC was investigating television, they looked into, are we going to be causing nausea? And determined that it was not an issue. That's where, by the way, I found that uh, quote from the journal in 1926 that was uh, a lead I found from the NTSC proceedings. Okay, the question was, uh, TV is going to be much worse than um, movie theaters in terms of virgin's accommodation conflict. Why do people get nauseous in movie theaters? Uh, a number of reasons. 3D in the movie theater is not perfect yet. Uh, one of the things I mentioned was those differences between the cameras. The, the slight vertical shift between the cameras as you're zooming or focusing or having the cameras off uh, is enough to really make you extremely nauseous. Another issue is ghosting. And uh, essentially all of the 3D systems used in cinema today have at least some ghosting. Dolby has the least, it's the best, but there's a tiny bit of ghosting in Dolby. There's larger amounts of ghosting in the other systems. The ones with circuit polarized glasses, so you can lean your head on somebody's shoulder, which you can do, by the way, with the Dolby glasses also. Uh, but if you lean your head on somebody's shoulder uh, with circular polarized glasses, that works with cross-polarized glasses, it doesn't, but circular polarized glasses have very poor blue extinguishment. So you're likely to get blue ghosting in circular polarization. Um, and all of those things that I mentioned about problems that we still have with 3D, they're why people still have issues. Okay, thank you all for coming. Don't forget to go to shubincafe.com.